Hey YouTubers, it's Charlie. So X-Men Apocalypse footage dropped, let's break it down. Speaking of breakdown, I wonder if there's gonna be a Deadpool joke in a future movie about them destroying the X-Mansion so many times. The reason this is slow motion here is because it's one of the Quicksilver scenes. But let's start from the beginning, I'm just gonna go through this sequentially as it appears in the trailer. Magneto and Charles still having the exact same conversation. It's just like Ian McKellen and Patrick Stewart in the first movie. Magneto, way more cynical. Charles, a little more optimistic. But the real noticeable difference is that we have left the 1970s and we are now in 1980s attire. I don't know what the exact year is for this movie, just consider it early to mid 80s. Miami Vice era X-Men. Speaking of which, Miami Vice Charles Xavier. Enjoy the hair while it lasts because he's totally going bald. Mystique's character looks like she's become something of an activist. When you consider Magneto in the Brotherhood of Mutants in their position politically and Charles Xavier in the X-Men, you can almost think of Mystique as like a third party the way it seems like they're presenting her in this film. She's like a slightly more militant version of Charles' perspective. I'd say she leans closer to Charles because Magneto kind of dicked her over in the last movie. We see the new recast younger versions of Nightcrawler, Jean Grey, and Scott Summers as we get this really awesome voiceover that you probably recognize is a line that Patrick Stewart said in X2. I feel a great swell of pity for the poor soul that comes to my school looking for trouble. If I remember correctly, he was visiting Magneto in his plastic prison when he said that line right before William Stryker took a military force to try and hit it. Then we travel back in time with this Moira McTaggart voiceover to ancient Egypt and see Apocalypse get his celestial armor because the origin story for Apocalypse is kind of complicated and gets tied up with some time travel and other Marvel characters. They might change a few things just to make it a little bit simpler because he only got his celestial armor. I mean, he was born looking blue like that when they captured Kang the Conqueror and boarded his time ship. He had traveled back in time and the group that Apocalypse belonged to took the ship. So that was when Apocalypse got his celestial tech. They've addressed this in various ways through the comics. So don't worry if you haven't read the comics, they'll totally explain it in the movie. The cool thing about the Celestials is that they're also kind of a big thing in the Marvel Universe. Obviously, they're going to have to treat them in slightly different ways. They're going to have to tiptoe around each other. But if they can both share the Quicksilver character, I'm sure they can both share the Celestials. But what we're seeing right here is part of his hibernation process. Like it's all, it's all tied up. He can put himself into deep hibernation because he's so powerful in the past. There's no one to challenge him. And the other big thing here is weaving in the mythology of the four horsemen. There have been a lot of different people in the comics that have been horsemen. The horsemen for this movie are going to be the new version of Storm, Psylocke, Magneto, and Angel, Warren Worthington. What happens when he selects a horseman is that he bestows great power on them and uses some of the same celestial technology to boost their powers in the same way he's boosted his own powers. Now for the most part, Apocalypse seems way overpowered, functionally immortal, and he can take any mutant power that he wants. But that's only because of a combination of his natural abilities and the fact that he is merged with this celestial tech. You are all my children. He definitely thinks of himself as a god. And there is a lot of classic Bible mythology weaved into this, which is funny because there's so much Catholicism weaved into Daredevil series. We don't really know what it is that wakes Apocalypse from his latest hibernation cycle, but logically they're just going to tie it to what happened during Days of Future Past in the big conflict. Even though Brian Singer has changed a lot of his own continuity, there is a lot of internal consistency. Like he does try to weave in things like the fact that they're lifting dialogue from Patrick Stewart's version of Professor Xavier. If you guys are big comic book readers, another person that does that really well is Jeff Johns, where he'll change characters without breaking continuity. Like he'll have some sort of new origin story where he revitalizes characters, but it won't completely tread on the stuff that's come before. Really digging the costume upgrades, these are Horsemen's Celestial Armor, but the X-Men have also updated their armor too. I think one of the best jokes about X-Men costumes in the movies was during the first movie when Logan was making fun of his costume and they were like, what would you prefer, yellow spandex? The really interesting thing about Magneto in this movie is that Apocalypse finds him at the lowest point in his life. He just has absolutely no idea what he's going to do. So of course this crazy cult leader comes along and makes him drink the Kool-Aid. You are confused because you don't know the way. You've been following the wrong leader. I know the way. Follow me. And we see Psylocke in Archangel. I'm going to call him Archangel because he is a horseman at this point in the movie. The origins of the Psylocke character are kind of complicated where she started in a different title, then they weaved her into New Mutants and they completely redesigned everything, so I don't know how they're going to explain her character in the movie. There's a story where she gets kidnapped and brainwashed by another group, rescued by the New Mutants. When she joins them, that's when she takes the Psylocke persona, so they might have a version of that in the movie. 
As for her powers, if you haven't read the comics, as the name implies, she has psionic powers. So in the comics, when she's stabbing people with this psionic blade, she's really stabbing you in the mind. It's not like an actual physical blade, but I think the movie has just simplified that, so this is going to be a physical blade that she can cut people with. But her psychic abilities are a little bit different from Jean Grey's and Professor X's. Hers are just a little more aggressive, attack-based. Angel's powers are a little more straight up. When he becomes a horseman, he gets celestial technology wings. They're almost like the organic metal that covers Colossus's body. But he can also form them into projectiles, which you see him use during the trailer. When he talks about cleansing the earth, remember the Bible imagery? Think of him as the Old Testament flood. Really thematically, you can see this is just asking the X-Men characters to make up their own minds about what their destiny is going to be, instead of just following someone blindly. That goes both ways though, you know, not just blindly doing whatever Professor X or Magneto says. So each of these X-Men characters will be confronted with their own identity, like, who am I? What am I supposed to be doing? Where do I belong? More awesome shots of X-Mansion upgrades? Quicksilver joining the fight in a much bigger way. He's a much bigger part of this movie. I love his basement. It is like the quintessential teenager's basement. We get a better shot of his mother, and the rumor is that they are going to acknowledge that he is Magneto's son in the comics. They really only made a joke about it during Days of Future Past. Apocalypse versus Professor X. I love the fact that he's throwing a punch. You never really thought of Patrick Stewart's Professor X character as someone who would actually get up out of his chair and throw a punch. The cool thing about the Quicksilver scenes in the trailer is that Brian Singer said that because there's so much slow motion involved, it took them forever to film all these scenes. Totally digging the new costume, much closer to the comic book version of his costume. I always love when they try to weave those things in. It's never exactly like it is in the comics, but they do try to honor it as much as possible. And I have absolutely no idea what craziness is going on here, but they're inside Cerebro trying to do something. Either they're trying to attack someone or they're trying to deal with Apocalypse, and Havoc just lets a blast out. Anytime I see Scott Summers or Havoc do something like this, I think of the classic cartoon title series where Cyclops just chops the mountain in half with his blast. If you guys didn't know, Havoc and Scott Summers are brothers in the movie, so they have similar powers. They don't quite work the same, but the way they've characterized Cyclops in the comics is that the tragedy of his powers are is that they're so powerful that if he were to open his eyes fully, he would chop a mountain in half. So whatever's happening in this scene, Havoc is going to destroy Cerebro. But let me know in the comments, what are you most hype about for the movie? I can't wait to see the origin of Apocalypse and the Horsemen. What I'm really hoping is, is that this movie will also lay groundwork for Mr. Sinister to come in the next movie. If you guys didn't know though, Daredevil is dropping at midnight all 13 episodes. There's no way I'm going to get through them all in a couple days. It's going to take me a full week to get through all my videos, but I'll probably post my first Daredevil video sometime early tomorrow morning. So be sure to subscribe to get that. And if you haven't watched Jessica Jones, don't worry, you won't be behind. As long as you're somewhat familiar with what happened during Daredevil season one, you should totally be fine. While you guys wait for that video to post, you can click here for my Spider-Man Civil War video that I just posted, and you can click here to watch the Civil War trailer. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. Let's high five. I'll see you guys tonight.